What's up, Internets? This is Fuzzy Tolerant Screencast number 15. The Uber search autocomplete thing. I should work more on these titles. I've gotten a lot of questions uh, over time and, and one very recently about the Uber autocomplete search thing that runs on the GeoPortal, the GeoPortal project, and those... Uh, uh, HTTP API rest -ish web services and yeah, let me show you what I'm talking about here hey, give me give it give it give it I want that where you start typing a search say one of these and it'll start auto completing and it can auto complete different things like uh, yep like parks and roads and look at various different things and bring them all back you know in just milliseconds and that's one of these services in the the rest dish HTTP API uh, post just framework that does that autocomplete I think I call it uber search because I'm kind of a hipster doofus but I, I got questions about that get lots of questions about that it's a little bit tricky both on the client side and the server side so I'm going to go over that real quick. Oh, and I should say that that really loud clacking you hear. I got a new keyboard. I know you guys are into my keyboards. Uh, this is the Cooler Master Storm Quick Fire Mechanical Switch Keyboard with uh, Cherry MX Blue switches. Same stuff you find in like DOS keyboard. And no number pads. So you're not doing that long reach over to the mouse. You know who needs number pads? Accountants! Accountants need number pads. The rest of us don't need number pads. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, things you're going to need. You're going to need some kind of server-side coding language. We're going to use PHP here because it's uh, the most popular thing going, arguably. Uh, but you could use Python or .NET or whatever. You'll need an ability to connect to the database you're going to be performing queries on. Or multiple databases, if that's the case. For PHP, what I've done for this example is I've just dumped a little bit of data into a SQLite database. That way I can share that along with the code and you can get it and play with it. Um, so for PHP, if that's what you're going to use, you will need the SQLite, uh, the PDO driver for SQLite and PDO and, and that kind of stuff. In Ubuntu, it's like app apt get install php 5-sqlite3 or, or, or something along that just you know app cast search for php 5-sqlite and you'll you'll see all the stuff anyway you'll need that that's all the setup you need oh trick um the web the http daemon user or the php user needs write access to the folder that the SQLite database is sitting in. Ask me how I figured that out. So make sure that's the case. You just, you know, if you're on Linux, chmod, you know, AE plash, W, you know, whatever. Um, and that should be it. That'll be all that you need. You normally want to put your SQLite databases outside of the uh, HTTP path. So it's not sitting in a shared web folder. I'm doing it here because, you know, I don't care. So, first let's look at the server side. Well, let's look at the database. And you can use whatever happy uh, SQLite browser you like. You can use a command line. I use SQLite Man, which is available on Windows as well, maybe on Mac too. It's, it's very nice and handy. We've got three tables. We've got addresses, parks and libraries, and it's fairly straightforward. I nixed all the, normally in your address table, you'll have like 8,000 fields, only about three of which anyone ever uses. I nixed all that stuff. So we've got an ID for addresses, libraries, and parks. There's a park name, there's a library name, there's a house number and a full address. So you can do like select, uh, GID full address from 
address. And it automatically, the SQLite man, uh, stopped me at 256 records. I just dumped like 10,000 in there. Uh, I used a uh, kettle, a uh, Pentaho uh, P data integration kettle. Great, great ETL tool. So there's this. Now, how we do this multiple select, where we're selecting different things, is we're doing a a union. So a union works where you've got two different essentially select statements and you're slapping one on top of the other. That means all the fields in each need to be the same. So let's do select GID. We'll go full address as name and let's give it a type. We'll say address as type from address. See how we've got a GID. This is just our ID we're going to use to get back to this record. A name and there's a type. So now we can go union select GID uh, let's see libraries library as name and we'll go library as type from libraries select GID park name as name oh do you hear that clicking oh it's awesome I may have to get one uh, you know for the, the Charlotte office just so I can drive my coworkers nuts park name is name and we'll say I don't know why I'm all capsing these parks as type from parks See how my typing is. Oh, pretty good. So you see we've unioned all these together. So we got different types, different GIDs. The, the GID is no longer necessarily, it's unique to that type, but not necessarily unique in this return. So there's all that stuff. So now you see when we want to run a query, we can just, on each of these things, we can go where yada equals yada. We'll take that query query string and essentially tack it onto a where statement and that's where you'll do all your magical stuff. That's really all it is in this uber search. It's basically a select and remapping the fields so they're all the same and then a union on the different things you asked for. So now we need a web service piece to get that for us. And I've actually rewritten this a bit one of the nice things about doing these podcasts is I'll rewrite some stuff I was doing before and go, whoa, this is actually a lot better than the first time I did it. Let's take a look at that code. I'll close this up. And here we go. I'll make this code a little bigger. So we're essentially going to pass a service to arguments. The... Uh, the search types, what types of things do we want to search for, and the query itself, what kind of query, basically what our query string is, what the user put into that text box. And then we're going to use that to construct a SQL statement. Now I've got three set up for this demo. I've got that address, parks, and libraries. So we're doing a little bit of tricky stuff here and I do more in the the uh, web the main production web service but that's all kind of you know Apple polishing you'll get the gist of it here so we're going to explode that query by spaces and what why I'm doing that is for an address to check and make sure it's an address I want to make sure the first element in that sucker is a number and that's why I'm exploding that and making an array out of it and this SQL is just going to be our holder for the SQL call. So the first thing we do is we say in array address, this in array fu function basically looks for an entry anywhere in this return that has address in it. So if we passed address as part of our query, it'll find it there. 
And in addition, the first element of the query string has to be numeric. It has to be a number. Otherwise, it's not really an address. So if those two things are true, we're just doing that exact same select statement. And what I do for address to make it fast, our, our address table has like half a million records in it in Mecklenburg County, is you don't just want to do a like or if you're using Postgres, a, you're probably going to do a soundex so it sounds alike so I can get typos. Instead of doing that, um, what you want to put in there is search for that house number first because those like and soundex searches are very expensive. So by putting in a house number first, you narrow down your uh, narrow down what it has to run those expensive queries on by you know a ten thousand percent. So we're going where house number and this quote, we're going to do some PDO data binding for this to be, you know, SQL, SQL injection safe. House number equals that and trim full address. I just like to trim because, you know, it could be a, you don't want a, a preceding or hanging space to screw you up. And like query, right, we're going to do another variable substitution there. Same thing go down, parks. If you requested parks is one of the types. You're just doing a, a park name like, and here's another uh, substitution or a, a bound parameter. And if they ask for libraries, exact same thing. You're essentially just constructing that SQL union call we did in, in SQLite Man just a few moments ago. So now we've got all the SQL. And at the very end, I'm putting order by type and name. That way it's returned by the type and the name. So addresses are with addresses and parks are with parks, etc. This is also where you could put, say, limit 100 or limit however much if you want to limit the amount of stuff coming back because you don't want some goofball searching for give me S star from, you know, your database and they send back, you know, three megs of JSON. So here's where we're going to connect to the SQLite database. And this is where you could put in your Postgres connection or whatever you're using. And we're going to set up a couple of variables. Now a like query in, in SQLite, just use a percentage for everything, match any different kind of strings before or after this one. Now the bind parameters for PDO do not like uh, having uh, you you building this kind of stuff within the bind parameter, so I'm just doing it here. So we're doing a query write, which I'm using that for the address like statement because we know the first part number is going to be okay. And query both for like parks and libraries where they might put in regional, but that may be the end of of the park name or the beginning of the park name, and you don't know. So we're querying percentage on both sides of the query. Now a SQL bind parameter, uh, or a PDO bind parameter, if it that parameter does not exist in the query, you'll get a crash. It will not like that. So what we're doing here is saying if that SQL statement contains house number, because they may not have asked for an address match, then bind parameter to that house number. If they ask for a query write or query both, you bind those parameters there. It will bind more than once. So if you have query both two times, like we have in here, if they ask for parks and libraries, it will bind to both of them. We execute it. We fetch all the records. We do a JSON URL and code, code the result because the result from PDO is really just an array. And then we spit it right back out. DB null, it's going to close the connection anyway because you know it's stateless but you know old habits and it's in a try catch block because anything connecting to a database should be in a try catch block because one day it isn't not going to work that's it this little bit of code does everything we need again the the production one does some fancier stuff like the soundx searches and stuff you can build soundx into sqlite but you have to compile it into it and by default it generally isn't so that's it. You can Apple polish this all you want. It, we're returning straight JSON right now, which means you'll get a cross, uh, an XSS error if you have it on a different 
URL than the requester. If you want to make it JSONP, you essentially just, here I give a little example, you would just, if there's a callback, uh, you would put that callback in some parentheses around the JSON to make it look like JavaScript. That, that's really it. There it is, that's the server side piece. You see you call it up here, um, search types, parts and libraries, query region. If we say just want libraries, we can say search type libraries, and here we just have the libraries. And we have three types, you can have address in there. And query is what the user probably put into a search box. And there's the JSON return. And that's it, that's all the server side stuff we need. Now for the client side stuff. Here we have a little box, or a little search, little search box. I generally tweak the jQuery UI autocomplete stuff a bit because I don't like how it's formatted. That's completely up to you. Um, since we're adding a category in here, which is in kind of an interesting little bit of code, you probably want to at least style that differently than the regular returns. But there's nothing fancy here. Notice this star uh, box sizing border box. That's a really cool thing to do. That way, uh, it, you, you know from uh, probably forever if you do web stuff that you set a width and then you set your padding and now your width isn't your width, it's your width plus your padding and, and, and your margin and all that kind of crap. Box sizing border box, it uh, kind of fixes all that so it works really like you think it should. Okay, and that's really it, and we're just calling jQuery UI, jQuery and jQuery UI, and I just picked a random style up here from the Google, Google Ajax API, and our little bit of script. So that's it, nothing really fancy there. Here's the script. A couple things I like to do with this is the search input box. When you click, I just like to select everything in there. That way, when you have a bunch of text, you don't want to have to like highlight all that manually and delete it and try your next thing. So that's a little handy thing to have. And now for the autocomplete. The autocomplete syntax in jQuery UI or, or the, the construction method is a little verbose, especially when you're dealing with JSON and making an Ajax call. Well, let's look at what it's doing here. We're setting a minimum length of four characters. Minimum length means it will not fire until there are at least that many characters in there. Delay, if this is in milliseconds, we're going 400. You don't want to have this be zero and have it fire off a um, JSON call until they've, they're done typing a little bit. You don't want to get one character and fire a JSON call. One, that's a lot of JSON calls, or Ajax, and, and two, that's, that's not going to be very helpful for your user. So a little bit of delay in there is good. Autofocus true, that just essentially means it focuses on the selection as you go down. Now source, this is where we're going to call our Ajax, our autocomplete PHP. So we're going Ajax, URL, data type, JSON. It can be JSONP if that's what you're calling. The data we're sending, this is the search types we want. We're going address, libraries, and parks. Now, uh, you could, like on our, our Uber search and production, we got like 12 different things, and not everybody wants those. So you just pick the ones you want. And our query is our request term. A request is, is part of the constructor. So that's just whatever's in the text box. On success, if it, you know, good things happened and our Ajax call comes back, if the data length or the number of objects returned is greater than zero we know we got stuff so we're going to map our data essentially we're going to map a label and a GID or our GID is just going to be our unique ID and response type which type of response was it if it didn't have a length of greater than zero in other words it found nothing you get this uh, Ooh, look I swore darn <laughs> You should really be careful when you swear in code because sometimes that can creep into production. <laughs> All right, ask me how I know that. Now, uh, response type, we're just mapping nothing and saying, uh, 
I got nothing. So that's what it's going to do. That's, that's how it's going to get that return. Now what the select function does is say, when you've, the user has selected one of those returns, what do you do? Well, we're gonna go, go run this function and we're gonna grab the response type and the ID from it. Now that's pretty much is everything you need to run if you were just looking at one thing because you wouldn't have categories. We have categories. We're looking at addresses, parks, and libraries. So this is kind of a little, there should probably be a regular way to do this, but this is, there's not. We're saying our data autocomplete when it renders that menu, and this happens before it, it, it paints those. Uh, basically what it does is you've got a current category and that's whatever category you're on now and if it, it'll append that and if it gets to a new one and these are in order so it won't get to a new one if there's you know they're, they're in order so it's not going to be mixed it appends another one of these li class ui autocomplete categories of the response type and we're just rendering that out oh i forgot to get mention one little fancy thing uh, this item name to proper case uh, you may have noticed in our database some of the things are camel case and some of the things are all caps. This little proper case is just a, a string prototype I usually stick in most of my projects that just proper cases it. So it's first letter of each word is capitalized. Nothing too fancy there. And prototyping is the way to go. Read. If you're into JavaScript, read uh, JavaScript, The Good Parts by Crockford. Great, great book. Very short. Usually most of my projects somewhere in there I'll have a bunch of these prototype functions to do different little things like that. What this little function does is this is our location finder. It fires when it selects. And I'm just console logging here because that's, that's a whole nother conversation. So you go in. Let's type something. Well, first, you see we typed in garbage. I've got nothing. So, let's type in an address. How about 580 and see nothing until we get to that fourth character. And since the first part of the thing is a number, it knows to look for addresses. And here's everything with 5808. You can keep typing, it'll narrow it down. Now, one thing I put in here just to show you that's kind of neat how we did this uh, in the service, this essentially a record set directly to encoding it to JSON, is it will do address 5808H. You'll see this record, I inserted into it a double quote and a slash add new line character. You see it automatically uh, backslash those. So it automatically cleans that kind of crap up for you, um, which is handy, much better than the way the, again, this is one of those, I, I do these demos and I rewrite this stuff and go, oh, this is a much better way to do it. So it handles all that for you. There's addresses, say if we type in something where there's more than one, you'll see libraries and parks, and it separates those out. You can pick one. You see out on our console log, it says I'm off to map parks, the type with an ID of 81. So here is where you would catch in your location finder, you've got the type of search you just did, so you know it's a park, and you know the unique ID, you know what that is. So here's where you'd go query that, run another web service to query that specific thing, get all the different things you want back from it, and add a marker to the map and zoom in and all that happy stuff. And Bob's your uncle. That is the Uber search. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. It is a, th this little microphone thing here, this is just kind of a, a gimmick. They've got a, all it takes to put that in there is just add this speech for when it becomes standard and X WebKit speech. This will only work in Chrome right now, I believe. 
it just adds that microphone and you can click on it and it'll say speak now and you can speak and it'll put that stuff in there won't really work right now because I'm my microphone's jacked into something else that is the uber search I hope that helps uh, it is a a tricky bit of code on both sides but really all it's doing is some uh, some basic select statements just like the other services and it's just doing a union in between them so it's standardizing the return of all those all those select statements that's it that's the podcast for today screencast whatever have a good weekend and i'll talk to you next month bye bye